Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. In the last episode we headed deeper inside the uh, final dungeon of the game. The Orphan's Cradle. Alright, so in the last episode we uh, got a bunch of treasure and we fought the uh, Wild Wadalos boss or however you say his name. <clears throat> So now we're coming up to the ending area of the Tesseracts. And we are just at the same point right in front of the final Falci Mage. Alright, so we're nearing the end of the game, guys. Hang in there. Um, we're directly in front of the final Falci Mage, which will take us towards the end of the game. Or the final area of the game, I should say. So now before we proceed any further... Um, let me quickly explain that um, the stuff you have, you should have set up for this next boss fight. So starting with the uh, battle team, I have Lightning, Vanille, and Fang. And the paradigms I have set up are Rapid Growth, Relentless Assault, Aggression, Combat Clinic, Infiltration, and Diversity. So if you're wondering how I have three Sabotars and three Synergists, it's because I have progressed each character far enough down their Crystarium so that they learn their level 2 in all secondary roles. So all of our primary roles are maxed out and all of our secondary roles are at level 2 or higher. Alright, so as you can see I have over 900,000 CP. <clears throat> so, um... I suggest that if you aren't where I'm at on the Crystarium, you seriously devote some time into CP grinding. This spot is an excellent spot because directly um, behind us is the Wadlasloss boss that we fought before. And you can now fight him as a random enemy at this uh, ending area of the Tesseracts. So upon defeating him, he drops 32,000 Christian points. So if you continuously um, beat him over and over, and if you want to get him to respawn, all you have to do is run back to the save point, save your game, and then press start and select to quit to the main menu. Then reload your game, and he'll be respawned so that you can fight him again. So that's an excellent way to get CP. <clears throat> so if you're behind, I highly suggest to um, use the Wild Sauce enemy to um, catch up on CP. Next up, let's talk about the equipment. For lightning, we have the Omega Weapon, Adamant Bangle, Ribbon, and Sprint Shoes. Everything's fully upgraded. For Vanille, we have the Nirvana, which is her ultimate weapon. Survivalist Catalog, Speed Sash, and Sprint Shoes. Everything's up fully upgraded for her as well. Finally, for, Van, uh, for Fang, we have the Kane's Lance Ultimate Weapon, two Speed Sashes, and Sprint Shoes. And again, everything's fully upgraded. So if you want to know how to upgrade any of those weapons to their ultimate forms, like you see here, and if you, want, if you have any questions about the accessories that I have, you can refer back to the previous episodes in this walkthrough. I cover everything in detail. Just look for the title that corresponds to what you need. Also, if you're wondering how to get gill, I have an excellent gill farming strategy. So if you're behind on gill and want to know a great place to get gill, you can check back. I got two different gill farming strategies. One is the sacrifices and the other is the adamentos. Both can be found in Eden. Alright, so once you made your final preparations, go ahead and approach the final Falci Mage. Now before you examine him, go ahead and uh, if you have plenty, toss a Fortizol and an Agizol. That way you're buffed up for the start of battle. And then examine the mage to get things moving. Oh, 
Alright, so you'll now be thrown into battle with the Time Ot Eliminator. So the first thing you should do is Liber him immediately. And you'll see that he has 3,825,000 HP. His chain resistance is 75 and stagger point is 200%. More importantly, he's immune to all status immunities. Meaning, don't worry about um, inflicting status ailments on him right now. Also, his vulnerabilities to all elements are halved. So start off with Relentless Assault. And let's stagger this guy. So once you've managed to stagger him, go ahead and raise his stagger percentage up to about 600 or 700%. Or if you want, you can boost it all the way up to 999.9%. .9%. This way you'll be doing massive damage. Alright, once he's um, staggered, you should use Army of One, or you can use regular attacks for massive damage. Now, after you stagger him once, the chances are you won't be able to take him out in one stagger. So, uh, go ahead and switch over to Diversity so that you can heal up. Now, at this point, he will change forms and fall to the ground. So if you go to the library screen again, you'll see that his status immunities are gone. So now you can inflict um, D-Protect and D-Shell and Slow once he's changed form and is on the ground. So switch over to Infiltration and debuff him. Once he's debuffed, <clears throat> you can uh, focus on staggering him again. Now don't really worry about putting buffs on your characters because this guy will dispel them really quickly. So it's just a waste of time to buff your characters. Instead, debuff the boss with D-Protect and D-Shell and then let him have it. Stagger him again and he should bite the dust. Alright, for taking out the Time Ot Eliminator, you'll get 48,000 Christian points. And you'll get the Imperial Armlet.
scared. But I guess being scared proves I'm still human. All right. So after taking out the time on eliminator boss, the final foul C mage will create the portal to the final area of the game. So go ahead and warp through the portal. Alright, and here we are. We're at the final area of the game. Orphan's Cradle, the Narthex. Alright, so if you need to be taken back to uh, Eden or Grand Pulse, you can use the warp gate behind you to warp back to the beginning of the Orphan's Cradle area. Now directly in front of you, you'll find a save point. And just ahead is the final battle. So if you want, go ahead and turn around the corner and get the final treasure ball of the game. Off to the left here, you'll find it. And this contains a vial of Etherzol. Now before going to the final battle, go ahead and backtrack to the save point. And we need to talk some preparation. Alright. So the first thing that you um, should prepare with is that the, what you need to know is that the, one of the final battles of the game, <clears throat> the uh, enemy will cast death. And if it hits your, um, if it hits your party leader, then it's game over. So we need to upgrade something that'll protect us against the death spell. So you should have the cherub's crown if you picked it up earlier. Um, from the treasure ball back towards the beginning of the orphan's cradle um, I highly suggest to start upgrading this if you didn't get it out of the treasure ball Then you can warp back to the beginning of the orphan's cradle area if you want to Now I would highly suggest to do this because this will increase the death resistance by 30% All right, so let's go ahead and uh... Oh my bad <laughs> we don't want to do that Let's go ahead and upgrade the Churub's Crown. So it shouldn't be too bad to upgrade. Hopefully. So go ahead and put any um, components that you don't really use um, into upgrading it. So you don't really need a multiplier or anything like that. Just use any components that you may have picked up. And you should be able to get it to its max level pretty quick. I'll tell you its max level here in a sec. Alright, so its maximum level is... Um, 6. And once you've improved the Cherub's Crown to its max level, indicated by a star... Your resistance to death will be 45%. Alright. So once you have it maxed out at its maximum level. Which is 6. You can use a Perovskite per upgrade crystal if you have one. And then you can transform the Churub's crown to Seraph's crown. At, and it starts off at level 4. This way you can increase your um, death, resist, death resistance even higher. So again, go ahead and upgrade the Churub's crown to its max level of 6. And then use a Perviscite upgrade crystal to transform the Churub's crown into the Seraph's crown. Alright, now let's upgrade it even further.
Alright, so the Seraph's Crown can be upgraded to its max level of 11. So once you fully upgraded the Seraph's Crown to its maximum level, which is indicated by a star, your resistance to death will be 60%. <clears throat> and that's really good. So that should help you out a little bit for the uh, final boss battle because he casts death. And if it hits your party leader, then that could be big trouble. So let's go ahead and switch that ribbon um, with the Seraph's Crown for lightning. Now you take note that you should put the Seraph's Crown onto your um, party leader. So whoever your party leader is, put the Seraph's Crown on him. And that will really help you out. Trust me, it's worth it. Fully upgrading the Seraph's Crown to its max level will give you death resistance by 60%. Alright. So finally, we'll talk about the equipment and paradigms before we uh, conclude this episode. And on the next episode, we're going to start the final battle. Alright, so the paradigms for my battle team are Rapid Growth, Synergist, 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 Relentless Assault, Ravenger, Ravenger Commando, Aggression, Commando, Ravenger Commando, Combat Clinic, Medic, Medic, Sentinel, Infiltration, Sabotar, 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 and finally Diversity, Ravenger, Medic, Commando. Alright, so if you're wondering how I have three Synergists or three Sabotars, again, it's because I have progressed each character far enough down their secondary roles on the Crystarium so that they've reached level 2 with all their secondary roles. Also, all their primary roles are completely maxed out. So, one further note about CP, you should at least get into the 900,000 CPs. Because after we beat the final boss, our Crystarium will expand to its final stage, which is stage 10. And whenever it does expand, you're going to want to have maximum CP saved up. So you can immediately start spending your full CP that you've saved up on your Crystarium stage 10. For your character's primary roles, this will give you a huge head start. So that you can immediately become a lot stronger as soon as the final boss has been defeated. So that you can have that advantage in the post game. And also just because we beat the final boss doesn't mean this walkthrough is over. We still have the post game and that's where all the nasty monsters are. So you're going to want to be prepared for that. Make sure that you um, max out your Crystarium with all characters in their primary roles. And then get them to the top where they can at least reach role level 2 with their secondary roles. Finally, go ahead and stack up maximum CP. So you can have a total of 999,999 CP. And you can actually get that pretty quickly back at the Orphan's Cradle. We can fight the Wadlilus boss enemy that we defeated a couple episodes ago and he drops 32,000 CP also you can refight Jabberwocky and Bandersnatch and they give you 32,000 CP as well and if you want to know a better spot to get CP it's back at Eden using the Adamentos <clears throat> so if you want to know how to kill Adamentos with a Crystarium stage 9 you can refer back to the previous episodes of this walkthrough I cover in detail Vanille has to learn the death spell and then uh, you set your characters up correctly with Vanille as the battle leader and you can quickly take down the Adamentos and he drops 40,000 CP per battle so if you're behind on CP check back on that episode so that you can get caught up also if you're doing the Adamentos farming <clears throat> he'll occasionally drop platinum ingots and traps the hydrants those um, two things can be sold well, the traps of hydrants you're going to want to keep because you can only buy them at the shop for 2 million gil. But instead of spending 2 million gil on traps of hydrants, you can get them for free from the Adamentos. If you have the Connoisseur catalog. So again, if you want to know how to farm the Adamentos correctly and what which um, paradigms you should have set up, which moves to use, and what equipment to have... You can check back and I show you guys in detail the Adamentos farming strategy. 
That way, not only are you getting 40,000 CP after each battle, but you're also getting um, platinum ingots and traps of hydrants. The traps of hy or the platinum ingots can be sold at a sh uh, save point shop for one th 150,000 gil. So that's an excellent way to get gil so that you can upgrade your uh, weapons into their ultimate forms if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about the weapons I have upgrading or how to upgrade them, um, how to develop your character's secondary roles, how to grind for gil and CP, and how to get any of the accessories I have, refer back to the earlier episodes in this walkthrough and I cover that in detail. Also, if you want to get... Um, all the treasure balls located in Orphan's Cradle up to this point. You can check back and I also show all the treasure locations. Alright, so that's going to conclude this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. Make sure you guys are prepared for the final battle. And I'll see you guys next time where we confront the final boss of the game.